Namaskar and welcome to Diplomatic Dispatch. I'm Vikas Farooq, your host on this brand new show, which aims to demystify diplomacy and provide you with a more informed understanding of international affairs from an Indian perspective. For this edition of Diplomatic Dispatch, our focus will be on a small but very important country in Northern Europe. It is Europe's oldest monarchy, is a member of the European Union since 1973 and a founding member of NATO. It has a population of just 5.8 million people and is one of the richest countries in the world with a per capita income in excess of $60,000. It also ranks consistently as one of the happiest countries on the planet, thanks to its welfare state, which provides free health care, free education, and generous unemployment benefits to its citizens in exchange for one of the highest tax rates in the world. I'm sure you have already guessed that I'm talking about Denmark. India's relations with Denmark go back more than 400 years to the establishment of the Danish East India Company in 1612 and the arrival of the first Danish ships in 1616. Two of the most important Danish settlements in India were Tranquobar in Tamil Nadu and Serampur in West Bengal. And the Danes maintained a presence in India till 1845 when they sold all their possessions to the British and ceased to be a colonial power. The modern partnership between India and Denmark is based on shared democratic values and a shared outlook on international affairs. There was a brief cloud over the relationship over the extradition case of Kim Devi, but since then, the relationship has gathered momentum, culminating in the signing of a unique green strategic partnership in September 2020 during a virtual summit between Prime Minister Modi and Prime Minister Mette Frederiksen of Denmark. India and Denmark are now collaborating in a whole range of sectors, from agriculture to green hydrogen, e-mobility to shipping, water management to vaccine development. More than 200 Danish companies are present in India, and over 60 Indian companies have a presence in Denmark, helping grow bilateral trade in goods and services to over $3.6 billion in 2020. As Prime Minister Modi has said, if Denmark's skills are yoked to India's scale, it can be an unbeatable combination. It is therefore not surprising that the first head of government to set foot in India since the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic is Her Excellency Mette Frederiksen, the Prime Minister of Denmark, who arrived in New Delhi on October 9 on a three-day state visit. She called on President Kovin, met External Affairs Minister Dr. Jay Shankar, and had in-depth discussions with Prime Minister Modi on the entire gamut of bilateral and international issues. I am privileged to have as my guest a leader from abroad who has redefined politics in her part of the world. As a teenager, she campaigned to protect Wales, preserve the rainforest and end apartheid. She made her debut as a parliamentarian at the age of 24. She served as Employment Minister and Justice Minister before taking over the reins of the Social Democrat Party in 2015. In 2019, she led her party to victory in the general elections, becoming the youngest ever Prime Minister of her country. She has been praised for her handling of the COVID-19 pandemic and for her strong stand on environmental protection. I'm talking about none other than Her Excellency Mette Frederiksen, the Prime Minister of Denmark, who is on a three-day state visit to India. Prime Minister, thank you so much for agreeing to speak with me despite your very busy schedule. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you so much and thank you for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to this talk. Yeah. Prime Minister, you are the first foreign leader to set foot on Indian soil since the COVID-19 pandemic began here. And this is your very first visit to India. I'm sure before, you, before your plane touched down in New Delhi, you must have imagined what India would be like. Was there anything about the country that surprised you? 
Actually, to be very frank, I was a bit surprised earlier this day because I was visiting a, a school here in Delhi and I met with both some young women and young men and I had the opportunity to have a talk with a small group of teenage girls and young women and to be honest with you, I was surprised. I met some very powerful young women, um, very determined and strong young women with a lot of dreams, not only on behalf of, of themselves, but also on behalf of India. And I was a bit surprised, um, not that I haven't been told about the strong Indian people and I know that um, you have a prime minister who are really into uh, uplifting the whole Indian society. Of course, I've heard about all that, but for me to meet a young girl on the age of 16 that stands up in front of me, uh, giving a whole speech and telling me why she wants to become a doctor, because she has seen during the pandemic how dangerous a pandemic can be, and why it is so important to be educated and to be independent. I was, to be honest, a bit surprised, but happy in my heart. Your father said in an interview that you have been preoccupied with political matters since the age of six or seven. I mean, when I read about it, I was amazed. So tell me, how did politics enter your blood? I cannot remember that. Uh, I cannot remember a, a life without being interested in society and, and politics. Um, my, my daddy is uh, a, a worker and very active in the trade unions in, in Denmark. And my grandparents were active in the Social Democratic Party and actually be, also uh, the generation before them. So it has always been a part of our family and our identity and also my identity. But actually, you said it yourself because it was the fight against apartheid and Nelson Mandela and uh, ANC in South Africa that really mm -hmm. transformed my first thoughts about politics and society into becoming more and more interested and more and more aware of the problems if a society is unequal, both when it comes to race, uh, gender, and of course, uh, social issues and the lack of sustainability. So um, I cannot remember a life without thinking, not as a politician, but thinking the whole society in, in all of my own thoughts, even when I was a very young woman, girl. Yes. Uh, Denmark has consistently ranked in all international surveys as one of the happiest countries on the planet. What is the reason for this? I think there are different reasons. Uh, one of the most important one is that we feel safe and we feel secure. If you lose your job in Denmark, there is a strong social network that will, uh, that will catch you. Um, even through this crisis with COVID-19, we have been able, because we're also a rich country, to provide everyone with the necessary help. Uh, so we feel safe and we trust. We trust in each other and we trust in society. And if you're safe and if you trust and if you have faith in each other, um, why not be happy then? <laughs> and I think um, to be free and to use the possibilities in a society, you need to be safe. Uh, I think that's the two or three main reasons why a lot of Danes feel happy and um, why we are also uh, in, ma in many ways I think a better society in many others because we have actually decided not in my generation it's two or three generations before my generation that we wanted a society with equal rights a strong welfare system uh, a strong welfare society a strong civil society and trust and sustainability. Yeah, that's but That's it has been a long fight. It started many, many, many years ago. And, uh, and we haven't been given any of these from nature because actually when we're talking about natural resources, we are not a rich country. We are a very small country. 
we don't have the good soil, uh, we don't have a lot of natural resources. Um, but we decided at a very early stage that we wanted to become a more and more modern welfare society. Not only society, but welfare society. At a personal level, what makes you happy? <sighs> My family, of course. Uh, nature. And, uh, and to be with animals, actually. Uh, I think that's the three things I would, I would like to underline. Um, at another level, of course, uh, to be a part of the Danish strategy uh, when it comes to the fight against COVID-19. And now, seeing that we succeeded in many of the things we did, of course, makes me proud and happy as well. But basically, and in my private life, it's family and nature. I believe you had to postpone your marriage three times because you were busy handling the affairs of the state. There were elections, COVID-19, and then finally uh, a big meeting within the European Council. Uh, uh, but it fell on a Saturday, the day that you had planned for the wedding. On that, on that Saturday, yeah. But uh, we succeeded. Prime Minister, Denmark is the only country with which India has this unique green strategic partnership. So tell me, how did Denmark become such a world leader in green technology? It started many years ago, um, more than 40 years ago, when we had the oil crisis during the 70s. Um, the 73 oil shock. Exactly. And um, some very progressive people thought, this will not work. Uh, we need to be more independent when it comes to energy, electricity. So. At that time, they started up the renewables, especially when it comes to wind energy. And today, many of our companies um, and parts of the private sector, is, they're really doing a good job on renewables, water, and so on. So it started many years ago, and therefore we are in a very good position when it comes to green tr transition and fighting the climate change. And luckily, we were able one year ago to form this green strategic partnership with India. Uh, I'm very proud of it. Uh, and, and to be honest, I'm also very proud that India has chosen Denmark. Because, I mean, there's a whole world of countries that you could pick to, to, to have this partnership with. Your prime minister said it already at that time. You have some of the skills, but we have the scale. Uh, and therefore, it's, it's, it's quite something, this partnership, because we are so different from each other, th the two countries. But because we have all these specialists and all these experiences, I think we can really help India in, um, in getting to the results in an earlier stage than we were able to do ourselves. So I, I really believe in this uh, partnership. You are now building the world's first energy island in the North Sea. What is the significance of this project? The whole idea is to be able not uh, only to uh, secure Danes with green electricity, but actually millions of households in Europe. Um, and we need to be free of the fossil fuels. Uh, and we need to rely only on renewables and electricity <laughs> has to be i mean we use it all the time all of us and the right way is not to try to think that we don't need electricity the right way is to ensuring that we can use electricity but in a green way so that's the whole idea uh, to 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 be free of, of fossil uh, uh, gas oil and to rely only on renewables. You had very detailed discussions with Prime Minister Modi on the 9th of October. How is your visit going to boost the green strategic partnership between the two countries? I think we have already boosted uh, our cooperation, actually, because when we started, it was wording. And the words are, of course, very important and common uh, goals and ambitions. But we need to show some concrete results. and. Uh, 
Indian and Danish companies have already started now in creating jobs, green growth, and now we have decided to move on. Uh, urban planning uh, is important, water management is important, and of course wind and um, uh, renewables in, 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 uh, in more general. So that, that's the next step, and, and already now we are talking about not even, not only cooperating on these areas, agriculture could be very interesting, and health as well. So these are then the new areas of the Green Strategic Partnership. Exactly. And you mentioned uh, the vision that both you and Prime Minister Modi have of marrying uh, you know, Danish skills with Indian scale. So in practical terms, how are we going to achieve this? On different levels. There are the political level, of course, um, uh, designing, uh, sharing ideas, uh, having uh, common agendas and ambitions on a concrete level with companies, Indian companies, Danish companies, um, and um, the personal cooperation is also important because it is difficult. The green transition is not easy and it will not be easy. And we are going to, we will be taking difficult decisions in all countries and that the new IPCC report really underlined that even countries that already does a lot have high ambitions. I think actually India have very high ambitions when it comes to renewables. We have a, a target of reducing uh, by 70% already in 2030. It's good with those ambitions and, and we are already doing a lot also on the concrete level. But even us have to do more. And if we are to solve these problems, and we have to do it, I, I, this is also a question about our democracy because the future generations, our, our youngsters, our children really rely on us. And I think in India, as in Denmark and many other countries, it is the young ones who have pushed your generation, my generation, all the grown-ups to really understand why this is so important. That if we are not able to actually prove to our children and to the young generations that we are able to solve it, why should they believe in democracy? So this is a fight about climate and sustainability, but also about our democracy. And if we, you know, when you, when you really have to find some of the important answers to the most difficult questions, you need relations and you need to be able to sit together and to be creative to find new ways. So there is a political level, there's a concrete level for our business and companies, and there's a personal yes. level to be inspired by each other, actually. Prime Minister, you came with a very strong business delegation as well. And there are already a number of Danish companies which are active in India, such as Maersk, Vestas, Elmwind, Danfoss, Grundfoss. You know all of them, yeah. Naturally, I mean, they are, they are world-beating yeah, yeah, uh, world yeah. companies. Uh, we are all aware of them. Uh, I mean, Maersk is one of the largest shipping companies is, in the yeah. world. Uh, so tell me, how do you see the business environment in India for Danish companies? I know that they are all very happy about India and about it being actively in India. I also know that a lot of Danish companies would like to have more activities and investments, innovation in, in India. Um, I think the Green Strategic Partnership can also be uh, a framework where we are able to make it easier for the companies because of course, two different countries, uh, different traditions, uh, positively and negatively. So. I think we can also use the framework to make it easier for Danish companies to go to India. And we would like more companies to come here as well, to uh, have more activities here, but also the other way around. I think there's a perspective also for some Indian companies to come to Denmark, actually. I believe 60 of them are already active in your country and doing fairly well. Yeah, and a lot of Indian specialists are also uh, in already included in, in, uh, in the Danish labor market. Um, so it, it goes both ways. Let me now turn to international affairs. I believe one of the subjects that you had in-depth discussions with Prime Minister Modi was Afghanistan. Now Denmark has been deeply involved in Afghanistan ever since the first Danish troops landed in that country in 2002. 
You have also contributed to the civilian effort there by promoting issues such as good governance, accountability, anti-corruption, human rights, and equal opportunities for men and women. So how do you see the current situation in that country? It is terrible. Terrible. Um, and what I really fear is that all these girls and women we have seen in Kabul and other places in Afghanistan attending universities, uh, playing football, um, we have seen their beautiful faces and their hair in the streets of Kabul, will now be thrown into the uh, dark hour um, again. Um, and therefore, we really need to stand united globally when it comes to Taliban, ensuring human rights um, and equal opportunities. And it will be very, very difficult. Of course it will. But we have to stand united, um, all of us surrounding um, Afghanistan. Um, humanitarian aid is necessary and will be necessary I think for I guess many years it was a problem already before what happened uh, recently um, the population of Afghanistan has suffered a lot already so humanitarian aid is also very important and then of course we need to work together when it comes to fighting terrorism uh, which I also fear can be an even larger problem now. Absolutely. My final question, Prime Minister, and I think this is perhaps the most important one. Okay. How does a small country like Denmark have such a big impact on the world? What is the secret of Denmark's success? Hopefully it's because we are leading by example and we do what we say. <laughs> Uh, I th I, hopefully that's one of, one of the reasons. Um, we have very high ambitions in Denmark, uh, especially when it comes to the green transition, uh, fighting climate change. Um, we have always been a very strong and true supporter of a rule-based world society. Um, we were one of the forming members of the UN. We have always been very, not always, but for many years, very active on the international scene, also when it comes to uh, the situation in Afghanistan and, and, and other things. Um, and we need some international players who take responsibility also when it gets difficult. So we know that we are a small country. Uh, we know that, and I, I can really feel it when I'm in, uh, when I'm in India. I, 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 I mean... Uh, just some few days ago, you were able here to vaccinate 25 million persons in one, in one day. day. Uh, it's uh, like t six times yes. <laughs> the whole population <laughs> in Denmark. So it's, it's really amazing. But e even though we are a very small country, we have some very strong values. Um, democracy, human rights, a rule-based international society. Uh, we have to take care of our environment and each other. Uh, so hopefully we can play an, an international role also in the future. Prime Minister, thank you so very much for talking to me. I'm sure our viewers now have a much better understanding of what makes Denmark such a special country and the India-Denmark partnership such a vital one. That is all I have for you tonight. Join me next week on another edition of Diplomatic Dispatch. Till then, good evening and goodbye.